are some things we need to be one step ahead. The people that God has always um, 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 visited, especially when he comes to his people, there are some people who experience God in, in a more powerful way. There are people who experience God, you know, you know, and this experience just lifts them up and changes them and, you know, everything good happens to them. Praise the name of the Lord. And uh, um, I want to um, just continue and talk about, um, um, about a step deeper, a step deeper. And uh, it, it's, it's a wonderful, your life must change. You know, I believe there is a power that is picking you up and just taking you a step deeper. You see, there are some, 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 some graces that comes upon your life. It's not you. Just a wave picks you up and pushes you. Okay? It just pushes you. Pushes you. It's not what you plan. There are some things that ought to happen in your life, not what you plan. It's just what God desires, you know, to release to your life. Hallelujah. You know, there are some times that we look at people and we wonder what has happened into their life. Because when God visits them, he really um, turns them upside down. And this is what I'm praying for each one of us. Hallelujah. That God, grace will push you, you know, into a deeper level where you shall experience that which nobody else is experiencing. I want to read about this uh, um, story of um, the man of God, Simon Peter, you know, in um, Luke chapter 5. Let me st start from verse 1. It says, one day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the wa water's edge two boats, left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the ones belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from ashore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down the net for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But uh, because you say so, I will let down the net. When they had done so, they caught so large numbers of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. I just pray in Jesus' name. That things will happen into your blessing will come upon your life until you can't hold them anymore. Amen. I pray that the weight of the presence of God will be so heavy upon you that you can't just hold it anymore. Amen. This episode, if I should call it like that, it's a wonderful um, happening that happened. Here is Simon Peter. This time, this encounter is the first encounter. He had not encountered Jesus on a personal level, you know, on this sort of level. He had not encountered Jesus on this level. And he was in his regular business. He was a fisherman. And, you know, he was so experienced. But this particular night was a unique night because all night through, they had tried to catch up fish, but uh, they, they couldn't get it. You know very well that uh, um, fish... Uh, Fishing is more successful during the night. But they had tried their best and they have, nobody was catching up a fish. Not only him, even the boats, the other boats, you know, that time, that business was bad for everybody. That night, business was difficult for everybody. It was frustrating. Now Jesus just comes in the morning and he finds a very frustrated man. Now it has, the sun has come up and uh, the Bible says that uh, Peter was mending his net, frustrated. He has tried, the nets have broken down, and now he's there, frustrated man, you know, maybe imagining what he's going to do. I want you to get the picture that the Bible says that they were on the shore of Gennesaret. If you have been to Israel with me, I've seen several people here who have been to Israel with me, with me so they understand. P Peter's home is on the western part of uh, uh, Lake Gennesaret, or, the, uh, no, sorry, the Sea of Galilee. And Gennesaret is on the eastern side, you know, um, the eastern side, rather, you know, 
um, um, so they were they had worked all night they were so far away from home they are on the eastern side and uh, it was very frustrating but the bible says that jesus was also on the other side there was no appointment between peter and jesus but jesus knew so well that he's going to meet somebody special and jesus as god he understood to be in the right place at the right time to a frustrated man. So for you and me, Akuna Sikumbaya, because Jesus will always be ready for you somewhere. No, I said somewhere, somewhere. You didn't expect him. He just pops up. Hallelujah. He just pops up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, it just reminds me that uh, um, I gave Shiro, my daughter, some pop-ups, irrigation, you know, gadgets. They just pop. When the time comes, you know, you are just around the garden, the garden and they just, they just come up and they start irrigating. And uh, Jesus always pops up when you don't expect. He has his own times. He has his own season. He has his own style. But one thing he knows, he knows very well where he shall connect with you somewhere. I want to tell you if you came to this church frustrated, Jesus is somewhere around the corner, very close to you. And Jesus can never miss you. And you can never miss to be where he wants you to be. For the Bible says, Jesus was there somewhere on the shore. And many people came and he was preaching to the people until there, there was no room for him to stand on the shore. And he asked to get on one of the ship, I mean one of the boats. And he got in one of the boats and uh, he, um, he, he started to preach to the people. And this boat belonged to Simon Peter. But Peter was just there, was not bothered. He was not a part of this cloud that was so anxious and uh, hungry to hear the Lord Jesus. He was in his business, a frustrated man. And the Bible says that after Jesus had preached, then Jesus, um, he knew who is the owner. He didn't ask who is the owner. He knew who is the owner. And let me tell you something. Jesus was on that show because of Simon Peter. He lived along the cloud. He was there because of Simon Peter. Something was going to happen in the life of Simon Peter. But it's not going to happen when he's among us, the people. So sometimes God will take you out, out of your geographical area. He'll take you out of your comfort zone. In this visitation of God, I want to tell a few things I've said and I want to repeat them again. How God is going to bring the transformation. One way is of dislocating you to locate you. When God wants to do great things in your life, sometimes he detaches you with some people. He also takes you out of a particular area. Sometimes you may be frustrated with this particular business and until you move out to another area of business. Sometimes you may be very frustrated with this profession. You just feel you don't like it. You just feel nothing is coming up. You know, also circumstances may, may really be bad for you. People are not with you. People are against you. I mean, you just feel uh, very uncomfortable with some people until you move out. Because God wants you to move out. This is how God works. Hallelujah. He changes the circumstances around you. Number two, God always maybe connects you with the people, some people somewhere. The Bible says that um, God sends a man from a faraway land. That's what the Bible says in the book of Isaiah. God sends a man from a faraway land to come and fulfill his purpose. Look at this man of God called Elisha. He was just doing his business. And this is Elijah also doing his business of, of moving from one village on one city to another one, prophesying. And then Eli Elijah is, 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 is directed by God, or rather is led by God to pass through a particular route. And in, on, on that route, there was a man plowing his land. And when this man saw Elijah, something connected their heart such that he had to leave what he was doing and make a decision to follow Elijah. And that's how Elisha got connected to Elijah because Elijah passed over. There was this woman, you know, who had uh, no child. The husband was old and uh, uh, Elisha used to pass through um, near their house. And this woman perceived, the Bible says, perceived. This is not an ordinary person. And he said to her husband, let us build a room and accommodate this man. Whenever he comes through, he can sleep, he can wash, and he can rest a bit. And that's what they did. They prepared a room for this man. And this man of God was so touched. He was so touched. And he told his servant, 
What can we do to such a woman? Such a wonderful woman. And this uh, servant said, ah, I think she, she's married to a rich man, but one of the problems, she doesn't have a child. And Elijah said, oh, tell her to come. And he said to the woman, tomorrow, this year, next time this year, you have a child. This woman, her life and the life of her family was transformed because they got into contact with somebody whom God was to use to deliver what they desired, what their money, what their wealth could not buy. And that is a child. So God may bring people around your life. Please don't ignore people. Even when you are going up, when you are passing over somebody, please take care. You may need them when you are coming down. You don't know at what stage these people. You don't know at what stage. You know, this just brings me to, you know, you know. Anyway, one time I was in a, in a, in a, in a safari camp in Masai Mara called Gareme. And, uh, you know, I was in my tent and uh, somebody was really working hard for me. Somebody was working uh, hard for my, you know, you know, just being nice. Somebody, a young man was just being nice. So I stayed there for several days and uh, um, the day I was to check out and then this, this guy just comes and says, you know, uh, pastor, you know, I know you don't know me. I am so-and-so, so-and-so, I don't know the name. He said, you know, I'm a son of so-and-so, I don't know the name. And then he starts telling me a story of many, many years. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful story. I don't know whether I should repeat it. But you see, you see what, something had happened to the mother of this child when this child was, was, was born. Even when she was conceived. And this, his father was a bit careless or was a bit, uh, you know. So I used to be a manager of a farm somewhere. I remember one time I called this guy. I said, wewe, iyo muchezo, muchezo, unacheza, cheza mimistaki. And I really had to be curly. And then I had to talk to, her, to the wife or the young girl. Okay, just, just talk the way you talk. And from this talk and the way I talked to this guy, this lady was going through very hard, difficult times. She was a very young lady, and this guy is drinking and doing everything bad, you know? And uh, so, because of that talking, because of my contact with them and my, you know, advice, not, it was really not an advice, but so more, more an instruction. I don't want to see this. I don't. Of course, with the anointing of a father. And then that was gone. So this, so this mother used to tell this boy sometime about how they used to live and how things changed. So I meet this guy. He's a senior. Um, he's in charge of uh, the accommodation in this particular camp. Oh, no. He said, Mimi ni mutoto wa flani. Na mama yangu aliniambia. My mother told me. You don't know who is go you are going to meet tomorrow. You just don't know whom you are going to meet. Every action you make, I mean, you, 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 you do to any contact. I assure you, it's like a seed you are planting that one day you're going to harvest. One day you're going to harvest. God, and my point is, God uses people. He brings around your life. So I want to make uh, some correction into your mind. When I talk about uh, transformation, I, I, when I talk about God visiting you, you know, when I talk about revival, don't look at angels coming down. Don't expect their angels. Yes, they could come down. But I want you to understand how God comes and visits his people. Hallelujah. He uses people. He brings people into your life. Some people he brings to your life, he is bringing them to your life that you may serve them. Yes. God is giving you also opportunities. He's giving you opportunities. So there's that thing. How God visits you is giving you opportunities that you may do good, that you may serve. Hallelujah. God, let's go be a bit spiritual. God will always bring you to a man of God that is going to speak blessing into your life. That is going to speak a prophetic blessing into your life. And the word of God, when it goes forth, it doesn't come back to him void. It must accomplish its purpose. Even as I speak here, the word of God is going forth and it will never turn to God void. It must accomplish 
everything as per the purposes of God concerning you, concerning your children, concerning your grandchildren, concerning your great, great grandchildren. The moment uh, the man of God, Abraham, met Melchizedek, he did know that his own children in his loin, they are receiving the connectivity with the living God. The Bible says when Abraham gave his tithe to Melchizedek, even his children in his loin, they also gave out. Ooh. That also means when God was talking blessing to Abraham, he was also talking blessing into his children who are in his loin. He got the first child when, I mean, he got his covenant child when he was 100 years and above. God gave him an opportunity to meet somebody called Mexedek. You know, he was coming out from victory. He met somebody called Mexedek and he gave out to Mexedek. God may bring people into your life that you may serve them, that you may give to them. He may put you into a particular company that you may serve that company. That that company will be your company in the future. Those who are connected with the WhatsApp, I send you a smaller clip about a Colgate, you know? And I've seen these things happening. The, the farm just around us is called Wanyororo. A young man came from Britain called William Br um, um, Bradell. The Bradell, who was the managing director of uh, Kenya Breweries, he began here. He was brought in as a clerk of this farm and hopeless farm up in Bahati. But the owner of this farm got drunk, got in debt, and finally he bought that farm. farm. You know the history of Kenya can never be written about colonialism without his name. He also bought Kenoru's farm. He also bought Kwamaiko in Kabasi. So he lived in this area. This is where he came as a young man and bought a lot of land. But the point is, he was only a clerk of somebody. He was brought in to be a clerk of somebody. Today, the history of Kenya cannot be written without the name of Michael Bradell. Because he served. This, I'm not talking to you things that are up in heaven. I'm talking things that are just around you. You need to honor and respect the people God is bringing around your life. Hallelujah. They are the people that God is going to use to usher in a transformation of your life. Hallelujah. Let's go back to this man of God because it's wonderful. But you need to understand when God visits, he comes not only to change your life but also to transform your life. So before I go there, what is supposed, what is, what is, what, what are you supposed to do? Number one is to acknowledge, is to acknowledge the move of God around your life. You have, you just don't have to, to live purposeless. We don't live in a, in a void world. We live in a world that has a spiritual activity. God is doing something every day. You need to acknowledge the God of your father. Solomon was told by his father, his father David, when David was about to die, he said, look here man, young guy, you need to acknowledge the God of your father. Because his eyes, they roam around all over the world looking out for people. You must know that the eyes of God are moving up and down, looking out for those who are called according to his purpose. And you are one of them. The heaven is always busy checking out on you. Can somebody say thank you, God? Yes, the heavens are always busy checking out on the people of God. Solomon was told the eyes of God are moving up and down. God is always looking. Where is so and so? Where is, you know, I know most of your names. I don't want to mention. But God knows better than me. He knows the name of your children. He knows what is going to happen tomorrow, the other day, the next day. He knows where you are moving. Even today, as frustrated as you are, God is checking out on you. Because that morning, God came out to check for Simon Peter. And his life, I'm just going to show you, was never the same again. Two things happened that morning. God came visiting. And he told Simon Peter, push your boat into the deeper sea that you can cast your net, that you can catch up fish. I want to tell you, God begins with you where you are, with what you have. Hey. God doesn't find you in the air. God finds you somewhere. God visits you in your family somewhere. God visits you somewhere in a village. 
God visits you in your trade, in your employment, somewhere, somewhere, in the situation you are, God visits you there. And he wants you to um, um, move a bit deeper in his relationship with you. God wants you to push a bit deeper, one step more than where you are. Despite the, your situation, despite your condition of today, God wants to do great things with you, but you must push in one step ahead. So Simon Peter was told, move in to catch up. And he said, we have been this trade for many years. We have been this area for many years. We understand and we know what th how things happen. We know what happens. Oh, Jesus said, no, but push inside. And Simon Peter obeyed. And he pushed the net. And the Bible says, when he came into the deep, then the Bible says, he cast his net into the deep. And that day, he caught so many fishes that his net started to break. So he called other people, his friends, who have been with him, with other boats, and they have been trying to catch up a, a fish and they were not getting it. He called them, he called them, come. I want to tell you one thing. When God visits you, it's not for your own benefit. It will be the benefit of people around you. I need to repeat that. Because God must visit you and uplift you, hallelujah, and separate you from other people, like he separated Simon Peter from other fishermen and just took him alone into the deep of the sea. But after what happened, it was not for his own benefit, it was for the benefit of all. Hallelujah. Not only your brothers, but everybody that is near will benefit with a great move of God in your life. So don't be selfish. Don't be selfish. Don't be proud. It is by grace that you are where you are. There were so many fishermen, but by grace, God picked up on Simon Peter. Not that you are better than other people. No, no, no. It's only by grace God has picked upon you so that you can be of benefit even to other people. And that day, this man of God caught so many fish. I need to let you know that God wants to prove to you that it's not by power, it's not by might, but by his Holy Spirit. So something is going to happen in your life that will shake you up so that you never forget it is not by your might, it's not by your power. If I look back my ears, if I look my own ears and my wife is sitting here and my, some of my family members are sitting here, we can really show you up our life when we thought God has abandoned us. I tell you for sure, there is a year. I told God, I can't pray you. I can't pray you. I can't pray you. You know, things were difficult. Things were so bad. But I didn't pray. I walked. I, okay, I used to come in and out. I mean, but uh, I was just... Uh, because things were difficult. I didn't know. I was in the position like Simon Peter. That all night he was frustrated. I was frustrated of life. I came down, and many bad things happened around me. So many bad things happened around me, until I was sure that God has forgotten all of us. But one day, which I know, our family knows, one day, God came visiting, and our life has never been the same again. And we have been a blessing to so many people in our life. So even when God is coming, he's coming in the situation that you are in today, lift up your hand in Jesus' name. I declare in the mighty name of Jesus, because I know God knows where you are. He knows your point of frustration. I declare upon your life a visitation of God that will separate you with all the others. It will separate you with the other business people. It will separate you with the other people in the ministry. It will, he will separate you in the mighty name of Jesus. He will separate you from, uh, from your own uh, dependency. And in the mighty name of Jesus, this visitation of God will uplift you in the mighty name of Jesus. It will bring a, 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 a non-reversible change. That is a transformation. I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that the heavens is going to open up for you in Jesus' name. I declare that my God will locate you at your point of need in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your hand in Jesus' name. Just thank God. 
Lift up your hand and just thank God. Just thank God for this time. Believe. Believe together with me. Believe together with me. Believe it together with me. Believe together with me. Rapo kashika rapa laba shelebe shelebe reperebe asanta laba shoko robo shalama. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to bring it to you, brethren. When God is visiting and allows you to go this sort of depression just before you see the miracles, there are things that are very important. There are elements or fundamentals that are very, very important. Okay, I think I'll, 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 I'll mention them anyhow, not in orders of priority. But I want to tell you, you must keep standing. By that I mean, you must just hold on. In the midst of those frustrations, you just have to stand. Is somebody with me? I know you are so squeezed, you are down on the floor crying, but just keep holding on. Just be there, be there. Wait upon God. For those who wait upon God, God will always visit them. I know I'm not preaching the preaching of fire. But hold on in your problem, hold on. I remember one day when I was in that situation, a voice spoke to me because I used to scratch my head. I used to pull my hair. I used to bang the ground. I used to do everything good and everything bad. But I heard a very audible voice telling me, but don't abuse God. In the midst of where you are, don't abuse God. Did you get what I'm saying? Don't abuse God, but keep standing in that situation. Keep moving. That's what I mean. Be there. Be found there. Don't turn back from God. Don't fall back into sin. Keep standing. Keep holding on. And you shall see the salvation of God. When the children of Israel were on the shores of the Red Sea and the soldiers of Pharaoh are coming, Moses told them, hold on. And you shall see the salvation of God. Keep standing. Don't run away. Don't talk things, bad things. Just keep quiet. Hold on. Hold your peace. And wait upon God. Waiting upon God is very expensive. When you're waiting, you're keeping quiet, don't blame others. Don't blame other people. Don't blame your wife. Don't blame your husband. Don't say, Uyu buwana na eni mujinga, kweni yafikiriagi, uyu bibi na kweni haonagi. Those things, you should not speak such things. Keep on holding and waiting upon because the morning is coming and Jesus is waiting somewhere around the corner. Something special is going to happen. I need a better amen than that one. Ah, you know what I'm talking about? There are some people in this congregation who are just feeling, I need to take a rope and kill myself. Oh, no, 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 don't die. If you die, you just go into darkness and there is no production. Then you wait for judgment. Why don't you just keep around? Because God does not reveal himself to the dead. He's called the God of the living. Our God is called the God of the living. If you die, <laughs> you wait judgment. And judgment is both, both to the saved and the non-saved. If you are alive, the Bible says better a live dog than a dead lion. What, what, is, the, what, is, what is so special with a dead lion? It's a lion, yes, but it's dead. It's better a live dog that can bark. And you can know the hyena is around. Yeah? You can know the hyena is around. But when you have a dead lion, it's useless. So the Bible says, better a live dog than a dead lion. So keep holding on. Keep waiting upon God. Don't break. Keep there. Because Jesus will just appear. This one thing that surprises me. The way Jesus appears, he has, sometimes he doesn't give any notice. He's just there. And he changes the circumstances. Hallelujah. One or the other thing that I want to say. Hallelujah. You must have expectancy. As a man of God, as a woman of God. When you are there in that position, you must have expectation. And I did not say faith. I said expectation. 
Because you cannot have faith without expectation. Oh, yes. You need to expect God at any time. You need to charge your spirit with the truth of the word of God. You need to charge your spirit with the promises of God. You need to charge your spirit by speaking about the promises of God. Hallelujah. When you are there, you need to expect God that he can come from any time, from any side. The Bible says, Jesus told Nicodemus in John chapter 3, that as you, as you can never know the direction of the wind, you don't know where it comes from or where it is going. You just feel a breeze around you. That is the way of the Spirit. That is the way of the Spirit of God. You just feel the Spirit. Hallelujah. You just expect God will emerge at any corner. When I have nothing at hand, God will appear. Because he knows. When I have nobody on my side, God will appear. He moves like a wind. He is there, but you may not see him. Hallelujah. You need to have expectation. I'm a son of God, and God cannot abandon me. You need to have expectation that God is faithful to those who believe in him. You need to have expectation for those who seek him, always find him. That expectation will be full of seeking the will of God, will be full of seeking the purposes of God, will be full of seeking the heart of God. This expectation will be full of uh, visions because you cannot expect, you cannot visualize what you don't expect. That's what I wanted to say. You cannot visualize. When you have an expectation, you have a vision. What are you expecting? What are you looking for? That's the time now your life will be ready, will be like a well-watered garden. When the seed falls in, chook, it goes up. You need to turn around and never talk anything negative about God. You need to search from the word, what are the promises of God? What is the works of God? What did he do with the other? What did he do with other women? What did he do with the other men? And by that, you shall speak out. Hallelujah. For the Bible says, God confirms the word of his servant. So you need to speak out of your expectation. I don't want to say you pray because sometimes when I say pray, people say, oh, prayer is very difficult. But you need to speak out to God about your expectation, about what you want, about what you, you look forward to. You must be clear. Don't be like people who say, me, let God do what he does. No, at this point, it's about what you yourself, you expect. The Bible says in the book of uh, Job, in the book of Job, hallelujah. We may read that as we move on and getting somewhere. Can somebody say thank you, Jesus? I like your visitation. Hallelujah. So the Bible says in Job, chapter 22 and verse 28, what you decide on, what you decide on, what you yourself, you decide, will be done. And light will shine on your way. Is that the scripture? In this point of expectation, you must say what you need. You must have what you need. I want this business to expand. I want my children. Hallelujah. I want my son. I want my daughter. This is what, you know, I expect from God. And God is faithful. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, let's turn to the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter 44 and verse 26. It says, who carries out 
Isaiah 44, 26, who carries out the word of his servant and confirms, hallelujah. Can you read it? God carries out the words you speak. God carries out the word you speak. Hallelujah. He carries out what we expect, what we talk. That's what God is like giving the fire the fodder. You know? Ni kama kupea moto kuni. Moto wezi waka bila kuni. You have to put the, you have to bring in the firewood. Hallelujah. God carries out the word of his servant and fulfills the prediction. What is to predict? Is to say before. Is to announce before. And that is faith. Hallelujah. You must have expectation. You must declare. Because God carries out. Speak to God what you want. He will carry it out. What you decide on will be done. And light will shine upon your, your path. Many Christians, they live a purposeless life. And that's why the glory of God doesn't shine upon their life. They live a life. Aina matumaini. Hakuna kule wanaenda. Unijomi nilelewa dini ambayo haunge fikiria makubwa sababu ni dhambi. Haunge, haunge, haunge ona mutu na gari mzuri useme ata mi nataka kama hiyo ati ume tamani. Hapa ana, nambia mungu ata mimi kama hiyo ndio mi nataka. Hallelujah. Many years ago, I was, uh, you know, many years ago, early 2000, uh, I, I was in America and I started seeing vans big vans. They had not come into Kenya. Big vans. Big vans. You know, with the seats. You know, vans like uh, what you see, the Foxy and the, the other cars, you know. Wonderful. But they are nicely built. I used to admire them. And when they used to uh, um, carry me to go for a meeting with this vehicle, I said, man, guys, I wish these cars can come to Kenya. I'll have one. Let me tell you something. I don't know. Last night, my son was reminding me I think it was 2007 or something like that. Somebody just comes to Mispa and gives out the money and he said, I want you to buy a car. I had just come from abroad. And somebody, not Muzungu, here in Kenya, just comes to the meeting, prayer meeting over the week, and he goes to the office and gives out a, a check of 300,000. And he said, it was 600, I think 600. Something like that. Yes, it was 600,000. And he said, this, I need you to buy a car. For the mission. Ay, 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 ay. There was something I was expecting. And I've started to see the Tungurue here in Kenya. Oi! I went for it tomorrow. <laughs> I, then I come to town. My friend has imported a car. And he doesn't want it. They imported the three. They, they are in a company, they imported three. They have disagreed. So they want their money refunded back. That day, I gave them the money. And I took the car. And we pimped it, you know, pimped it nicely. We put new tires. Kama zine kwa nawe America. You know, zile kubwa kubwa sports. Si munajua KYM. I mean, K? KYY. You know, the car was KYY. Nikaweka matairi muzuri. Hata wezi fikiri hati nikangurue. Kalikuwa kame pimpiwa hili ya ujaona buwana. Nikatoa hizo viti, nikaweka zile za matatu shuttles. Mambo kuisha. What you expect. What you declare. Hallelujah. You know, one time, I can give you so story. So one time, here we are, many, many years, they, they started bringing colored TV in Kenya. There was no colored TV. I didn't, even a black, I didn't have even a black and white. So one of these days, we are <laughs> visiting a cousin to Margaret. He has a big TV, colored, and, uh, you know, that time was Jimmy Swaggart was uh, really uh, booming in the whole world and uh, bringing messages and songs, and I used to like it. But here I am, I don't have a TV. Then Margaret, my wife, we are sitting in his cousin's uh, house. We have just come visiting. And he says, she says, me, I always tell my husband, I like a TV like this one. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And then the discussion just went. I said, you know, I don't have money. <laughs> so when you come home, Margaret had bought another dining table and put it in a corner. You know, I used to come from my prayer room and say, you shall have a TV. It was in a corner like this one. My kids can remember what I'm talking about, and Margaret knows that. You shall have a TV. I come into the sitting room. You shall have a TV. I don't, I don't know how long Margaret, it, Margaret knows. I can't remember Margaret. One or two weeks. Then we received a call from his cousin and said, come and take your TV. 
I said, we don't have a TV. He said, it is in my house. You need to come. I said, I didn't have a TV. He said, I'm telling you, your wife said that you need, she needs a color TV. You come and take one. How did it come about? Don't ask. How much money? Don't ask. Then we delayed for one week because I didn't have the money. Then he calls again. He said, you know, I've switched off my TV. Now I'm, I'm seeing your TV in my house. You need to come. So I said to Margaret, let us go. So when we went, it is very expensive. It was all costing about like 70000 plus the DVD recorder and everything. Wonderful thing. One of his friends has brought them from abroad. And when he went to see him, he said, you know, my cousin wants that TV like one. He was telling, take it. So he, I went in. He said, pack the TV. Go with it. Pay when you want. So if I have little money, I used to bring 10,000, 5,000, 3,000. I even don't know whether I finished that TV, Margaret. <laughs> I'm not sure I finished paying that TV from your cousin. I, I, really, I'm not sure. But the thing is, the desire of your heart is what I'm talking about. I'm bringing you to understand that God knows your trouble. He knows your problem. I need to see people bubbling up with expectation. I need to see people, you know, enjoying what God is going to do in their life. I need to see people when they come to Mispa, they are not demanding from God. They are thanking God for the great things God is going to do in their life. I want to see people speaking great about their ministries. Oh, hallelujah. What God is going to do in your life, in your ministry, and God is going to do great things. This, this one month, you know, I've been talking great things about this ministry. I've been talking about millions. I've been talking about a great move of God. I've been talking how God is going to bring in people and how sign wonders and miracles are going to happen. I'm speaking about this area. We are going around praying for this area. We are going around preaching in this area. And, you know, our preaching is not ordinary preaching. There's something we are targeting. We are praying for those souls. We, we know God is going to bring changes. I said here, you need to look at a house of somebody and pray over it. You know your neighbor has this particular problem. You engage in the presence of God, praying for them, expecting God to, will come into that house, and you are telling God what you want in that house. God, save that house. Save that husband. Every time there is fight, every time there is a disagreement, every time there is a, he comes in drunk and bad things are happening, you lock yourself into your house and target that house and just pray and pray and pray and pray until when God will have done something. You do it expectantly. You look at your neighbor's children that are suffering. You start speaking prophecy upon those children. They shall not be like their mother. They shall not be like their father. You look upon your life. You start speaking about, I mean, the prophecy upon your life. You look at your own children. You speak to their life. Speak to those, the unborn children. Because the Bible said, as I quoted, that even the children of Ibrahim, they were blessed even when they, before they were born. They were blessed. Even your children will be blessed before they are born. Oh, I thank God for the people who are expecting children now. Oh, I thank God for you who is expecting children. Can you lift up your hand and say, thank you, Father, for my children. Thank you, Father, for my children. They shall be great in the land. Poverty will not be their, po their portion. They shall be king and prince in this land. They shall rule this world. Men shall serve them. In the name of Jesus, men shall esteem them. There will be no opposition in their life. They shall lead companies in the mighty name of Jesus. From my loins, there shall come kings. There shall come prince. I believe in the name of Jesus. There shall come doctors. There shall come lawyers. In the mighty name of Jesus. There shall come bishops. There shall come revivists. People who shall raise the dead. I believe it for my children. And my children's children, we shall transform the world in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your hand in Jesus' name. Thank God for your future. 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 Thank God for your children in future. Thank God for your children. Thank God for your family. Thank God for the impossibilities. Thank God for the impossibilities. I want to preach to you. It doesn't matter. The foundation of curses in your family. It doesn't matter. The foundation of your family. How curse work in that family. How bondage work in that family. I don't care the bondage of drunkenness in that family. What I know is that my God is going to visit 
He shall enter in that family. As he entered the boat of Simon Peter, he shall enter into that family. And great things are going to happen. And great things are going to happen. And great things are going to happen. He's going to transform your life in the mighty name of Jesus. When God comes visiting, he's going to do something in your relative's house. Nobody, 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 nobody. Nobody will not know that God has blessed his family. Oh yes, Father. Everybody lift up your voices. Thank God for your future. Thank God for your grandchildren. Thank God for your grandchildren. Thank God for your grandchildren. Thank God for what God is doing. Thank God for what God is doing. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God for what God is doing. Thank God for what God is doing. Makosaka Rapa Repelebe Labasoka. My God is lifting you up. My God is lifting your family. My God is lifting up your family. I feel in Jesus' name. Although I want to continue teaching this subject, but I feel in my spirit something is happening in your life. Something. My God is moving to the root. He's moving to the root. He's moving to the root. He's moving to the root. He is moving to the root. Makoka laba saka raba repelebe shakapo repe rapalaba shotoba reperebea lapa sota reperebe rapaka raba. Yes, yes. God is not very far away. God is not very far away. He is just where you are. Yes, yes, yes. You know, brethren, some people think that because there is no one in their family who has ever been a, a pastor, so the anointing cannot come to their life. Some people think that in their family, nobody has ever driven a car. Oh, it, doesn't, it doesn't go like that. It doesn't go like that. It doesn't go like that. Some people think, who in our family has ever built a story building? Oh, yes. I mean, who, who has ever been? Who has ever been on a plane in our family? It doesn't go like that. God is just where you are. In the situation of your family, I feel in my spirit that God is releasing a blessing to the families. God is releasing a blessing to the families. God is releasing a transformation of your life. Your life will not be like your mother's. Your life will not be like your father. The Bible says, Jesus came to separate. Whoever cannot leave his father, whoever cannot leave his mother, can never be the disciple. Listen, Jesus himself said, he has come to separate mothers and fathers. I know you, you take that word on the other way around, but I want you to take it on the other way around. Jesus came to separate you with the suffering of the foundation of your mother and your father. I need somebody to believe with me. You need to take it. You need to expect greater things than you ever seen in your family. Look out at other families. They are driving big cars. They are building big houses. They have, I mean, even my family will be like that family. In the mighty name of Jesus. Even my children will be like their children. Look at where they are going to school. Even my children will go to their school. My children will go to their school. Oh, my children will drive such a big car. Karopa kuropo shakaraba Repe Repe rewe shalaba Repe raba sukaraba Repe lebi asuta laba Salaba nama Repa kolobo shalaba It will happen into your life I believe God is releasing an anointing Of separating us From the Poverty foundation Of where you were born God is coming to pluck you out. Anakuja kukungoa. Anakungoa na mizizi. Anakolibariba. Anakupanda pale ya nataka. I speak upon your life. Your business will not be like your neighbor's business. Your business will not be like your parents' business. I want to let you know your own children will not live in the same area where you are born. Oh yeah. Your own children they will not build houses. They will not build houses the same like you lived. Because you lived in a Kanyumba ya Matope, 
Then your child comes and build a simba or another house ya matope. Hakuna. Iyo tunakata. Iyo tunakata. At the match you went is to buy a motorbike. Iyo tunakata. Ro ya kabaskin na motorbike. Iyo tunakata. I thank God I have driven bicycles. I thank God I have ridden a motorbike. Some of you know me when I was riding a motorbike. There was nobody between here and Akuru who had a motorbike. Only me. Nobody who had a motorbike. And I had a big motorbike, racing motorbike. You know, when I'm going down the corner, my Likumi, everybody used to go away. You know, I was young. I had, I had destroyed the, 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 the exhaust. And they went to another Jalu and made, called Michael. You know, you know, you know my, my wife understand and my daughter understand Michael. You know, he was a mechanic. And he made another bigger exhaust and he put another inside and toboa mashimo i tell you man when i say rum 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 everybody might come you know i'm around and i used to nick one in a ringer you know i used to go down atakama pikipiki watoto wangu hakuna amenunua pikipiki ya kwanza Mungu hajawaruhusu waanze na pikipiki. Mimi ndio nianze na pikipiki. Lakini hawa si wa pikipiki. Do you understand what I'm talking? Yes, your children will not begin where you are. They shall not begin where you are. They shall never have a model that you have. No, they shall not have. They shall not have. I'm telling you, this revival is touching your life fast. This revival is touching your life fast. People outside must look at your life and see God. I want to tell you God is doing something. As he met Simon Peter on his point of frustration, he's meeting you at your point of frustration. And today, in the mighty name of Jesus, I bring to an end. 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 Every curse in your family, I bring it to an end. Every bondage of poverty, I bring it to an end. In the mighty name of Jesus, every spirit of struggling, I bring it to an end. Lift up your both hands in the mighty name of Jesus. And I'm casting away, and I'm casting away, and I'm casting away every demonic spirit. I'm casting away every demonic spirit. I'm casting away every demonic spirit of struggling, of struggling, of struggling, of struggling, of struggling. You can never struggle like your mother. You can never struggle like your father with your marriage. It can never happen. It can never happen. You can never struggle like your mother. You can never struggle like your father on finances. Today, in the mighty name of Jesus, I call upon the power of God to come down and pluck off that curse upon your life. That curse upon your life. That curse upon your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, lift up your hands and say after me, Heavenly Father, today, I declare I don't belong to a suffering family. Today, I denounce the spirit of struggling. I denounce the spirit of poverty in the mighty name of Jesus. Today, I declare my Jesus is lifting me up. I am receiving as per the heart of God in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hand in Jesus' name. Let the power of God come down. I command every demonic spirit to let loose today in Jesus' name. Lift up your hand in Jesus' name. Feel the power of God. It is striking you wherever you are. Wherever you are, something is happening. Wherever you are, something is happening. Something is happening. Jesus is on your boat right now. Jesus is on your boat right now. Jesus is on your boat right now. Mako kapo rapaka repe. Saka. Can you feel the power? 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 Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus. Just keep quiet in the presence of God. Lift up your hand in Jesus' name. By the power vested upon the name of Jesus, that we shall cast out demons. And they must obey today in Jesus' name. I cast out that foundational spirit right from the roots of your mother, 
right from the roots of your father that has made you to suffer. I command you demons to let go of this life in Jesus' name. I command it in Jesus' name. God is moving. God is moving. He's detaching you from the foundation of struggling. I feel one more time. The spirit of struggling. Like Peter struggled the whole night. But when Jesus landed on the boat, no struggling again. Even for you, I declare no more struggle. No more struggle in Jesus' name. 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 No more struggle. My God, my Father, in your holy name, today is your day to change the fortune of people in this sanctuary. Right from the foundation of their birth, Today is the day to change the fortune of how they do their business. Today is the day, Father, to change the fortune of their calling, of their ministry. Let them start all over again today. Simon was never the same again. On the same sea of Galilee, but he was never the same again. On the same sea of Galilee, he used to traverse but on a different mission. And from that day, even when the sea was against him, Jesus used to visit their boat. When they were on the sea with the other disciples and the storm came, but Jesus appeared and cooled the storm and called Peter out. On the same sea, Miracles took place. On the same seashore, blind were healed. The lame walked. On the same seashore, they, had to, they were able to feed thousands of people. On the same seashore, God healed this mad young man who was in the grave. Yeah, cutting himself. Nobody could control him. On the same side of Gennesaret, miracles happened. And by this, I declare, you are starting a transformed life of signs, wonders, and miracles. You are starting a life in your family. In the same locality you have been, things are going to start happening in a new way. I release you from this altar under this anointing of the newness of God. And you shall see the goodness of God in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. May the goodness of God follow you up. May the goodness of God run after you. May the goodness of God run after you. If you understand what I mean. Wherever you shall be, may the goodness of God run after you. May the goodness of God run after you. When you go this side, the goodness of God, it follows you like a shadow. You shall never miss out on the blessing of God. You shall never miss out on the blessing of God. You shall never miss out on the blessing of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Just thank God. Just thank God. Worship the Lord. Just worship the Lord.